Tell me why you want to share your story. I wasn't raised as an extremist, but I was hungry for power. I didn't have anyone to explain, you know, you're being indoctrinated. My name is Tanya Joya, and I was married to the highest ranking American in ISIS. John and I met online when we were 19. He was a white upper middle class American from Texas. Growing up in the UK, I experienced racism every day. I saw him as my ticket out. For 10 years, he was my master and my teacher, my best friend. Suicide bombers are not cowards. It takes courage to kill yourself. John and I moved to America. We had big dreams to have lots of babies, one to take over each continent. I want to take over the world. Don't tell me that's not ambitious. But John wanted to go to Syria to join the fight. I knew my children would be pressured to become child soldiers in Syria. I can't handle that. And one time Michael comes in with a grenade. We had to get out. This is my story. Okay. Well, how have you been these last two, two weeks since I saw you? Good, good. It's been uh, busy, but I like to be busy, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, I'm glad you caught me. I'm glad we ran into each other. And, um, you know, kind of primed me for 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 seeing you again and doing this so it's good if i i should run into everybody who i bring on this thing ahead of time and then <laughs> it kind of gets me motivated to all the more you know yeah um so how when was the last time you did a film with without i mean sort of on your uh, as a sole director because that's not typical for you well i had a series the first big project more recently is i did a six-part series for netflix called surviving death right um, and then this year I did a five part series for CNN on UFOs that hopefully they'll eventually be revealing in 2023, the merger. Okay. Complicated. Already know. Uh, okay. What? Oh yeah. no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be another reason to do this again. So go ahead. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. Um, and then this feature, uh, I also did this past year. So, you know, okay. um, yeah. 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 Um, well, this was, um, yeah, this was terrific. I mean, what a what a subject Joya is, right? I mean, my God, could you have hoped for somebody more um, uh, charismatic and 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 you know attractive on the camera as well as just sort of complicated and difficult? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How how I don't know what you can say. What do you, can you talk about that? And can you talk about your relationship with her and maybe and her relationship to the documentary? Is it okay to talk about that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a different kind of film for me because often I am getting very I, I spend a lot of time with my subjects. It's incredibly immersive. And right. you know, mm -hmm. the project is a year in shooting to Daryl Hunt, 13 years in shooting. You know, you're just you get to know the person. For Tanya, um, I had four intensive days up front and then I came back and filmed with her again. And so okay. I knew that the core of the film was gonna be this interview and I didn't wanna rush it. You know, I, I wanted to give it a lot of time because I, um, you know, she's told her story a lot. Uh, she's done these news bites. I mean, not as right. not like this intensive, but, um, and I, I really wanted the time that we would just sort of break through it all and, and get to the, the honest truth. And not to say that she was putting you know, deliberately up a shield or a front, but I think 
well, it's just know. hard once you've told your story so many times. Sure, you develop a you develop a language around it, and and maybe a defensiveness in some cases. I don't know if that was her case, but I imagine you know all that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I I think uh, she. I just think that she had a story down and she was telling it. And so, so it was important to go back over the story and to really give her the time. Part of it too, I wanted to construct the feeling of going into this dark, very intimate private space with her, which eventually in the film, as you see, we, you know, it, it feels, um, almost interrogation room like that you don't really know. I mean, you know maybe that she's gotten out, but you don't really know. You don't see her in her daily life until close to the last part of the film where this mm -hmm. background drops away and we're in her living room in Texas. Um, and I think that intimacy is the core to the storytelling as well. Right, so part of it, well, you, had to, you have to establish trust, right? I mean, as much as you can. And maybe somebody who is, uh, I don't know, like, you know, I'm just making certain assumptions. So please correct me if I'm wrong, that, you know, she's, uh, I, and I totally would get the fact that she might be very cautious and um, maybe withhold trust. And it doesn't sound like a heck of a lot of time compared to some other uh, projects to try to establish as much. So she, you could break through that. And also maybe in the retelling as, as a technique, Maybe that helped you pierce through some of that or narrative, right? Yes, I think some of it is just that, like you you spend time together, but also, I, I I honestly think you know, and she says it in the film, you know, she's a radical person and she's mm -hmm. complex, and right. that she doesn't necessarily know who she'll be in ten years. She says, and when she goes back and she talks about Osama bin Laden, for example, and she says, well, I'm going back to that other self. That's my other self. Yeah, that so was she, amazing. Yeah, she she acknowledges that she has all these pieces inside of her that um, she's compartmentalized. Still, yeah, yes, exactly. And compartmentalized that she's trying to reconcile and piece together. Right. And and she says, because she she has this kind of affect of like giggling and laughing through stuff. And I, I was always trying to get her to like, you know, we're talking about something serious. And and she was like, that is my defense. You know, I, right. I, I want to laugh through it. So we, you know, we would go back through things because I would say, OK, but, you know, and I understand it when you're in person with someone, but like when you're, you know, seeing someone in person and they're sort of laugh through serious things. But right. on a film, I was trying to explain, you know, we're not going to know this is your defense mechanism. It just seems right. like you don't care. So we would try to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, right. She had to kind of understand the audience's perspective and the way yeah. and just make sure she understands how what she's going to be uh, putting out and, you know, right, representing of herself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I was thinking we often, as I was asking you about establishing trust, which, you know, every filmmaker or I mean, narrative filmmakers, too, they have to do it with their actors. I mean, so it's it's really no different. But I was thinking about the other way around. I mean, you know, what about you're trusting your subject? Uh, um, do you think about does that well, come up? Yeah, it does, because I mean, that's that's the whole point of really. <laughs> knowing you have to spend a lot of time to get past the facade that you know and and i'm i'm not just saying tanya I, I think we all live as survivors with you know this is my this is my front and if you're being asked or pushed to go deeper into who you are and what you're about um you know, we think, oh, sure, I'll do that. I, I want to be part of this, you know, documentary. I'll do that. But when you really get to that place with people, it can be hard. And it can, and it, I, I was just saying the other day, you know, some films, you know, Annie and I did a film about, uh, about um, knuckleball pitchers, baseball pit players, yep. right? And so yeah. you have someone like uh, one baseball player, R.A. Dickey, was very open. He had written a book. He was talking about his sexual abuse. He was just very present. The other one, um, Tim Wakefield was a pro ball player his whole life. 
he he knew how to treat the media and just himself he was just someone who was more closed off that's how he lived his life you know as people do and and but by the end there's this moment when he retires where he connects to the emotion of retiring from this thing he loves and that's crucial to get to that place it's crucial in every film i was going to say one other one is the devil came on horseback with brian steidel who was a former u.s marine captain you know who that's his job to like have a front to really yes. be strong. right 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 so you have to push the shell yeah and when i say push i mean you have to be respectful but you have to also know that an audience if they're not let in to the truth the authentic emotional vulnerable self they're not going to connect to you and so that was with tanya i think i i wanted it as much for the audience as for her like they need to see that side of you to connect with you mm -hmm. it's she's yeah it's this is a complicated person yeah you can tell you see it i mean the camera you know it's uh does not lie <laughs> mm -hmm. you can try to do what you want but if you're in front of it but you know the viewer can see a lot more than you think right so yeah. um now you knew you had some amount of hours and there was as you said before this was the linchpin of this was going to be an interview with her but so you knew that there's going to be archive uh, uh, there's going to be footage home movies uh photos um uh stuff uh, i guess news newsreel mm -hmm. right so did, did, did you knew that beforehand i assume you had it kind of fleshed out yeah yeah can you talk about a little bit how that informs does that inf what's the relationship between that knowing you're going to present that and maybe you're in the early process of figuring that part out and, and yet you're interviewing somebody Mm. Do, do you script it? How does that work? Yeah, well, well, scripting definitely sort of the overall narrative of her story, but the visuals were an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. So, and for me, I actually didn't want to shoot recre in this. You know, we could have done feet running or whatever. More first time I've heard that that expression. What? That's the first time I've heard that recre. What? Recre oh, oh, recreation. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the first time somebody said it on the oh, show. Okay. So, you know, or impressionistic B roll or whatever. Uh, but I was like, I, to me, her story speaks to so many other people's story that the power is to see the Syrian people also fleeing, to see the people in Egypt who are going through, you know, revolutionary moments, to not only rely on you know recreation or you know impressionistic shooting that like if we the it's so we the, a lot of the work was in finding archival material that could be threaded through the film that could feel authentic to her own journey you know we had a limited number of photographs so just balancing the photographs with archival material of like london from the time in the 80s when she was growing up was really important um, and then additionally, just balancing that with a few voices that helped contextualize the bigger picture, because I think her version of her radicalization and what was happening to the formation of the ISIS, uh, to the um, Islamic State and, and the caliphate was uh, something we needed to contextualize with other people who have who've studied and, and can, can give us you know the truth about like about jihad for example right right put you yeah you really feel like you know where you're at in this film and you feel you know what i mean you've given a real sense of you're really you and your team really did a great job of just making this really feel like uh you knew where you were during this and you know where you you know we're going where you've been in the and the story and and in her journey you know which mm -hmm. is so, you know, I, I, well done in that way regard, you know, it's called a radical life and it's currently on the streaming platform discovery plus right already. So yeah. how did that, how did that work out? You produced the film or. Uh, uh, produced it was produced it? with original productions original. Uh, by produ original productions and discovery plus. So discovery plus bought the concept original productions okay. have developed um were you, know, you approached 
to produce it. Yeah, I was approached to direct it. Yeah. Okay. Is that typical in your nowadays? How does? Yeah, sometimes I'll get approached or we'll get approached together and, um, and you know, Annie too, and right. depending on our interests or time availability, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love directing and telling a story and sometimes not having to produce in the sense of, of like, you know, managing everything is just right. such a relief. You can just be creative and that's liberating. Really, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, that's the case here. Right. So that's nice. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, and do you, do, or do you, uh, get approached frequently enough where you're actually turning down things sometimes <laughs> like, uh, we can't really, uh, not interested or too busy or can you, um, <laughs> I always take a phone I don't want to sound like yours. What are you, are you like my agent now? Yeah, I would say I'd love to be because I never know, you know, like I look at all the films I've done over all the years. I mean, even like to think back to the devil came on horseback. It was like my uncle called me about Brian's sister who he was telling this story. And I was like, well, if Brian comes back with those photographs, give us a call. Cause that I knew was going to be revolutionary. So you just, you just never know when a story is going to come your way. It just, you have to just be open to it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was my introduction to you. The devil came on horseback. So I guess I've been, I've been uh, uh, watching since your first, right. That was your first feature documentary. Uh, trials of Daryl. No, I had done oh, that. You I've did done a you? couple before, but before that. Well, all right. Well, that's people. that is the one that. Uh, all right. Well, it's it was my introduction to you. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> last, I guess. Last thing is, um, I mean, oh well, we have some time. What am I thinking? Uh, uh, uh regarding directly to the uh, the project is is uh, is, is did Joy uh, has she seen it? Yeah. So she saw it. Um, did she have notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> um people always have notes right don't yeah they? of course <laughs> um she saw it in los angeles the screen for her mm -hmm. um i wasn't actually there because oh wow um but it was screened with a, a producer pia uh calinger who um had developed this relationship with her and um and also the head of Discovery Plus, Egal, and um, Jeff Hassler, who's with Original. So it was just with people that she had been speaking with and knew. Okay. Um, and, you know, well, this is usually the way it goes. They either really like it at first, and then they go to sleep and think about it and obsess about it, and then come back to you and tell you all the things they hate about it. Or they hate it up front, and then they work through all that, and then they like it. So oh, hers okay. was the, the first, the the uh version of that which is she really really liked it and thought you know it was a great telling of her story and then sort of you know you get sort of like oh I hate that shot of my eyeball or whatever you know and i and oh, i get it right. i would probably be the same way it's very hard to process your story i mean you know i don't know if i told you this but like joan rivers when i did the joan rivers doc you know, I, it was, it was that, you know, I made a mistake of leaving her a DVD and then she, she, you know, she was showing you people. So in the end, I had to just like sit with her with the final version and just say, you know, here's the final version. Like if there's anything you can't live with, like then we discuss, but otherwise like we're done, you know, like I can't get any more feedback. Right. Well, in her case, maybe in like jo Joyce too, maybe they just need to be kind of, uh, somebody needs to tell them what's going what the the word is and what the final word is and, and maybe on some level that's a relief for them even though they'll never admit to as much but yeah no i i think look you know you want to be in control of your narrative right? right i would think so um so i think it's really human nature to it but usually and this is the the thing that you know i'm sure every doc filmmaker would say the thing you're most worried about the time that the person revealed something that seemed really really terrible and private they never bring it up it's usually like why did you let me wear that shirt you know it's 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 kind of more of the superficial stuff that that actually people uh respond to it it's just i guess human nature i don't know and you think that's kind of the long and short of it, or are they hiding behind something that's superficial in order because there may be, a, I don't know, I don't, 
Who knows? You're not. We're neither one of us are therapists. What? I I don't I don't know if there's anything deeper. I think it's literally like, um, mm. you mm. know, there's a ego in seeing yourself in front of the screen for so much, it, right. especially a real person, right? Someone who's, and even actors, we know they're constantly saying, you know, the lighting is terrible. The this is, you know, so it's I think just human nature. I mean. That would be, I guess, if the film went completely off the rails and they, we were, I was totally misrepresenting, maybe then that would be the focus. But if that, there's nothing, there's no meat in that. There's nothing to chew on. Then maybe you just go with the sort of superficial stuff. And I imagine you want to make, you know, Joya, whomever, Joan Rivers, happy, right? You want them to be. Well, you know, with Joan, it was important that I, I felt it was important that she supported the film because I think it was a supportive film of her. Like I, I never intended, and I think I, I really came to love her. And so mm. that was really important to me. With Tanya, you know, I, I didn't have the, I wanted to make a film that I think was is honest and represents the, the, the truth of her story that was portrayed to me you know, I would never want to misrepresent anyone's story. And so, right. um, but, you know, I wasn't hundred percent sure that she was going to be fully on board and I'm not so sure, you know, even though she's come and she went to the Hamptons with the film and things, I, I don't know if she'll wake up tomorrow and not be fully on board. I really don't know. Yeah. That's something that's a little unnerving. I think I've said, I called her Joya before. I meant Tanya Joya for God's sake. That's I, okay. People, it's your yeah. last name, Joya. Yeah. yeah, Ms. Joya. <laughs> um, and she is she still with? Well, I don't want to give away the ending, actually. Um, yeah, no, because well, we won't. Yeah, away. it's the yeah. whole point is you gotta see the movie. Although you know she's here and she's supporting them. I mean, yeah. she's been uh, seen it. But her journey, it. her escape, is I think a really compelling moment in the film. Yeah, for sure it is, and. Um, so uh, I was going to sort of ask you, which it's interesting. I didn't think I would get down to this point of of comparing Tanya Joya and Joan Rivers. <laughs> it's interesting how that can happen with, with various subjects in your films. And mm. over time, you know, there are certain th certain experiences you have with your subjects that sometimes there are comparisons or parallels rather. And, and um, right. And, and do you make much of I asked this recently of Joe Berlinger, just because I. I was talking to him and uh did you have uh do you keep in touch with many of your your subjects uh do you make an effort to do that is that something that you is important to you what did joe say <laughs> <laughs> he said he he did keep in touch with a lot of your subjects <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um, actually i and i actually what i i also asked him and you know this was an uh i like to think once in a while i come up with an original one i said are there, are there any people that came off badly in their eyes like you know even they felt they came off badly is a better way to put it mm -hmm. and you know that you maybe have who have come around you know mm -hmm. maybe with time you know and uh and there was a guy or uh who that, that was like that one of his in yeah, one of the uh, uh you know the the west memphis three oh i was wondering yeah i was wondering if that paradise lost um i um most of my films, because we shoot over such a long period of time and they are really character driven, mm -hmm. I have maintained relationships with some of the key people, mm -hmm. um, but not always. And in this case, you know, probably not because mm -hmm. it was a different kind of a film and right. it was more of an intensive interview over a shorter period of time. Um, and some of it is, you know, your your protagonist is not always that person that you're, you know, that you're that you're going to have a friendship with, you know. I understood, right? And uh, you know, I don't even know if I mean a friendship, just yeah. but keeping in touch, yeah, yeah. Um, and I I should mention, you know, we said we weren't going to talk about the ending, and I'm not going to, except for to say that the component of the the sun mm -hmm. <laughs> and where you kind of are suggesting one of her son her oldest son and where he he sort of his journey it's an interesting way to wrap the to, to tie the film up you know 
it's yeah. it's an alarming, almost alarming in some ways. It gives you a sense of uh, of anxiety. <laughs> you know. Well, I did a very long interview with him, and you did not. Yeah, I did. Um, oh wow! But I didn't. I. It's a very short moment because he's a teenager, and teenagers. I have a teenager. Teenagers. Right. Yep. Should, you know, we can't hold them accountable as we can adults. You right. Know? Yeah. We know brain science, we know all of that. And he's impressionable and he's making choices now. And right. um, so I didn't want his uh I didn't want his words to come back. And you know, and I and that's so, really something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's in it. I mean, he really is in it just as as Tanya says, you know, she's radical and she sees his radical mm -hmm. beliefs. Yeah. For better or for worse, you know, some of it is, you know. But he's so, growing up. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. That's really something. Thank you. Well, this, again, it's called The Radical Life, directed by Ricky Stern. And it's currently available to stream on, uh, after a very successful festival run on Discovery Plus. So, all right. Well, this was nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, well, this yeah. is your third time I, I look back. Thank you.